want to give you a history of campus dining services. Oh my God, how boring. The history of campus dining. But the reason why it's important is because of the big three that these that Kate, uh, Katie and Caitlin were talking about. Because they, they're in, in our history. Prior to 1987, we didn't exist. Now you're sitting there thinking, I'm pretty sure they had beans and wieners on this campus before 1987. <laughs> because after all, as a university, we've been here since what year? 1839, thank you, that's right. And there has been food service on this campus since 1839. But it was not performed or, or uh, produced by campus dining services. Because as I said, we didn't even exist before 1987. And for most of you, I'm guessing that's right around your birth year, or, or very close to it. So we, as you know, as a business, we are not very old. Um, but there was food service on this campus. And who was it? It was Sodexo. It was uh, Aramark, it was Chartwells, which is a, a subsidy of uh, Compass Group. Uh, we had the big four back then. We had four of those private contractors on this campus during a period of four years. Anytime you turn over one, a, size of a sizable contract like that every year for four years, something's not going well. Something's not going right. And the administration back at that time said, I'm enough of this. We've had it. We're going to form our own company. So they took back then the food service that did operate the residence halls, actually reported to the director of residence. So we had a friendly divorce, if you will. We separated <laughs> campus dining from residential life. And then we also then took over all the retail locations that up until that time had been operated uh, by those private contractors. And we've been successfully operating the food service on campus since that time, since 1987, without those, those big three or big four companies. Now, why do I tell you that? Well, I, I want to tell you about our history because they're right. Those companies do make a lot of profit. And I don't want, you to, I don't want there to be mis any misunderstanding. We make a profit. No business will be in business very long if you don't bring in more money than what you're spending. So just to get that clear, we make a profit. But our shareholders, our stockholders, if you will, are different than Sodexo stockholders. Because uh, us, like 25% of the other colleges and university on campus, campuses in the nation that are self-operated, their stockholders are their students. And yes, we do make more money than what we spend, but it gets plowed right back to students. Now, you probably noticed you haven't gotten any refunds, you know, based on our profits. And so what we, what, where do those profits go? And so I always like the, the examples I bring when I'm talking to our new employees is that, well, they go, for example, to build that bridge that, that gets students from that side of college to this side of college without playing a game of Frogger every day with your life. <laughs> uh, they help build a Stankowski field. We contributed about a quarter of a million dollars to the Black Culture Center. But we really like to spend it on ourselves. And so $9 million of it went into the new student center. And that's $9 million then that was not used out of student fees. Now, it came out of students' pockets. I want to be very honest about that. But it didn't come out of that fee assessment that you all pay to have that beautiful new student center. And uh, it, it built places like Plaza 900 or the renovated Rollins that just opened up. That's what we do with our profit. The other thing that we do with our profit is figure out ways to do exactly what we've been talking about today. How can we get better food to our students? And better food, real food. I mean, that's really what, what we're talking about. And, and let's be honest. Uh, according to the definition of real food, that can sometimes be tough when you're sitting in the middle of Missouri in January. You know, we're going to import our bananas from somewhere, and it's not going to be local. That's, that, that, that goes without saying. But I've really been proud of what Chef Eric and, and his culinary team have attempted to do in, in recent years. And this really is recent. It's within the last five years that we've really, the light bulbs come on and said, man, it just makes more sense to buy our produce, for example, locally when we can, rather than pay all that shipping and the, the carbon footprint and the transportation costs and, and what it takes to bring in those other foods. So that's our history. Uh, we are a self-operated university operation, food service. Every employee of campus dining is also a University of Missouri employee. And are they underpaid? You bet they are. I'll be the first one to admit it. Uh, we've been at, you know what, I'm underpaid. Everyone thinks they're underpaid. But I, I've been in a, yeah, the whole department has been obviously in this, in this hiring freeze, uh, as well as salary and wage freeze uh, for the last two years. Our, our folks, 
are, are tough. I mean, they are literally, if it was the only income for a family of four, most of our folks would be in that poverty level. Uh, our cooks, our chefs, though, do make about 26, 27,000, our head cooks, and uh, our, our professionally trained culinarians, executive chefs, they make more than that. But our dishwashers, they are. It's, it's around that $18,000 a year mark, so our salaries are pretty low. It's, it's unfortunate. Okay, um, just real briefly, what I, I want to talk about what you can do, because that was one of the points uh, to impact us and what happens. Uh, let me tell you a story. I, I really started to change myself, and that's, thank goodness it's students that have made me change. But about five years ago, four or five years ago, some students came to me and said, we've got to have free-range uh, eggs, or excuse me, free-range hens and uh, cage-free eggs. And I'd never heard of cage-free eggs. Didn't know what in the heck they were talking about. What are you talking about? And so I, I met with the students, and it, it was a students, it was a group of students that were obviously animal rights um, activists. And they approached me so well. Because administrators, we really don't like in-your-face students. I mean, we, we want to have a, a, a good dialogue, but we don't want to start with the sit-in. We don't want to start with the hunger strike. Or <laughs> <laughs> we want to start with some dialogue. And uh, the, good, the good news is that uh, these students came to me and said, I don't even know what a cage-free egg is. You know, what are you talking about? And they educated me. I mean, they really educated me. They showed me films. And I, and I, and it, some of it was a little propaganda, but a lot of it wasn't. And the more I educated myself, the more I realized, we've got to do this. We have to do this. And, but man, I, my family gets lectures when I find them buying, you know, non-cage-free eggs, um, whether it be my mom or my, my sisters, uh, because that's the only kind of egg I buy now. And uh, I made sure that that's the only kind of egg that we buy here on this campus. And did it cost more money? Sure it did. But by, by figuring out ways to divert those dollars into that better food, that's what we need to do. And that brings me to my last point, then I'm going to turn over to Eric, and then we, we want to save a lot of time for Q&A. Um, the other thing I would tell you that you can do, besides a, a, approaching administration in a meaningful manner, you know, don't bring the pitchforks and torches to begin with, but once you come to us and, and tell us your thoughts, we'll, we'll really work hard with you. We've done that with Sustain Mizzou, and we've done it with PETA, and we've done it with lots of different groups. The, uh, the other thing, though, I want to tell you is that you can mostly influence your peer group as much as administration. And it's your peer group that needs education. Because really, for the most part, we're going to give students what they want. I mean, that's, we, we are a business. Bottom line, we are a business. And the more demand there is for healthful food, the more demand there is for organic food, um, I'm hoping it's just like elect in the electronic world. Prices will come down and, and it will become more common if there's that demand there. I'll tell you one way right now, we could capture $1.2 million starting tomorrow that we could use to spend this money. And that is if every student that ate in the residential system ate the food they took. I'll tell you right now, we serve 2.4 million meals a year. You take anything times 2.4, you're going to end up with a big number. Well, here's what I want you to take times 2.4 million. Five ounces. Because that's the estimated waste of solid food and beverage every single meal that occurs with every single meal we serve. Almost a third of a pound. So a third of a pound times 2.4 million, that's food I don't have to buy for you guys. I don't have to buy it for you guys. We can use that money. We aren't going to give you a refund. Sorry. You know, we aren't going to figure out how much we save, but we're going to do things like start to buy the legacy beef, like we do over at Pavilion at Dogs, which is grown locally 25 miles down the road. It's grass-fed beef, hormone-free, but we don't serve it everywhere. Why don't we serve it everywhere? Because it's three to four times the cost of the beef that we do serve everywhere. But we're starting, and we're now serving thousands of pounds of that every year over at Pavilion at Dots and other locations during special events. So if you can influence your peer group to figure out ways to make sure that we have enough money, that then we can divert that money from what we're using with it, feeding the garbage disposal, feeding the landfill, and use it to buy better quality food, then we can still make college affordable. Because local food is not cheap. 
and organic food is not cheap. And it, it does take money. And we have to make colleges be affordable as much as possible. Because uh, if no one's here, it doesn't matter what you're serving.